Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Deck. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be talking about playing Call of Duty Black Ops 4 on Shadows Cloud Gaming Platform. So guys, without further delay, let's go ahead and get right to it. To kick off today's video, I wanted to talk about the overall experience of playing Call of Duty Black Ops 4 on Shadow, and overall it was a very good experience. I did have the graphical settings quite cranked all the way up, uh, so in competitive games sometimes you want to turn on the quality settings a little bit, that way you can have a higher frame rate, uh, but as you'll see later, I didn't have any problem achieving a minimum of 60 FPS, so I didn't feel the need to turn on the quality settings anymore simply because I only have a 1080p 60Hz monitor. Uh, so with that being said, I know some people definitely swear by higher frame rate uh, gaming and Shadow does support that. So you can turn the quality settings down a little bit to have a higher average frame rate. Uh, so with that being said, I really didn't notice that the latency of the connection uh, had really any impact on my performance, but I definitely have it on my list to get a higher frame rate monitor. So maybe I can test games locally versus online in the future to actually see if there is any difference between my performance in a game when I'm playing locally versus when playing on Shadow or Paper Space or so on and so forth. So it's definitely something on my list to do in the future. Uh, but really, with that being said, I thought the experience was very good. I didn't have any like any streaming artifacts at all, and it definitely felt like it was a top-notch, uh, high or low latency uh, experience. So moving on from there, we'll talk about the our actual results that we got from our benchmarks, and then show some gameplay later on in the video. Next up, we have our performance results from a couple different matches of Black Ops 4. The reason I do multiple matches for my uh, actual benchmarks is so that if a map is more difficult to render for some reason or another, we have a good average of what you should be able to expect on the minimum, maximum, and average FPS. Uh, so with that being said, on the minimum FPS side, as you can see here, we did very good at a 64 FPS. On the average FPS, we did even better at 88 FPS. So with that being said, a very good experience. As I mentioned in videos in the past, 1080p 60Hz is kind of my golden standard for cloud gaming. If a game can achieve that very solid and very repeatable, then I think it's a great fit for cloud gaming. And we didn't even have to turn on our graphical settings to achieve that with Shadow. So very good there. And also, since I have tested Paper Space already, I do know the results from Paper Space 2. And on the average side there with their P5000 tier, which is the exact same GPU, we actually did 10 FPS better. And on the minimum FPS side, we did 15 to 20, I don't remember the exact number, but we did 15 to 20 FPS better on the minimum FPS side on Shadow. So even though they have the exact same GPU, it does seem that the CPU upgrade that Shadow implemented is doing its job. Uh, having a higher base clock speed is definitely beneficial for games, uh, maybe not other tasks, but since we are focusing on games with Shadow and Paper Space, then having that higher base clock frequency is very beneficial as these results are showing. Of course, not every game shows as good as a benefit, um, but definitely Black Ops 4 is one that definitely does benefit from having a higher base clock speed. So that being said, a very good result here. You can always turn on the quality settings if you have a higher refresh rate monitor to achieve a better average FPS. In this next segment, I'd like to showcase a graphic that is a random two minute segment of gameplay from a couple of the run throughs that I played through uh, to get my performance benchmark for the previous slide. So what I think this shows, at least in my mind, is the consistency of the experience. And as you can see here, this isn't a super consistent experience. In fact, especially in run number two, you can see that, which is the orange line, uh, if you can't see the headers, the orange line is showing there's a crazy amount of inconsistency, almost a 40 FPS spread. I do generally like to see the frames kind of in a 20 FPS range just to have a more consistent experience. But since our minimum FPS is 64, you're probably going to not notice that much if compared to our average FPS was 60, for instance, and your dips were down to like 30 versus dipping down to 64 FPS, you're going to notice that a lot more. Maybe on a higher refresh rate monitor, you might notice this, but since we do have such a high minimum FPS, this isn't, isn't as big as a deal that it is a pretty inconsistent experience but it definitely is something if the game didn't perform as well, uh, it might be a bigger issue. So that being said, I still think it's a very good overall experience, um, but not a super consistent experience. 
for this next segment, I just wanted to showcase some gameplay to give you guys an idea of how well the game played, the visual fidelity, as well as how fluid the experience seemed. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this gameplay. If you don't make it to the end of the video, thanks for watching, uh, but I will have a full conclusion at the end of the video. Anyways, without further delay, let's go ahead and jump right in. Tempest ready to fire. Hostile RCXD spotted. See, come on. Sharp shooter active. Tempest ready to fire. RCXD ready to deploy. Deploying C command. Thanks for watching this video guys. I hope you guys found that gameplay halfway entertaining and I hope you found the video overall very entertaining and informative. If you did give the video a big like, I do greatly appreciate you guys' support. Also, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask those in the comments below. So once again guys, thanks for watching and until next time, Zach out.